Yeah, hello there. Uh, my name is Saurav and I hereby represent Smart Tech Technologies. This would be my first video for the MATLAB classes. I've been trying to post this video for the last couple of months but couldn't find the time to post it now. So uh, what we are going to do today is uh, we are going to do some basics over the MATLAB. Before that, <clears throat> when you start installing uh, the MATLAB software, uh, there are two things which are required by the user to fill uh, the first thing is the license key so let's see whether I have a MATLAB software in my computer or not so yeah this is the MATLAB software you can get it downloaded from the website itself or you can get it from torrents or some other source so there is a folder called crack over here and you can get this install uh, text document over this install text document you will find these two keys which are to be uh, required to be filled when you are uh, trying to install the MATLAB software now there are two keys over here you can choose either of them but accordingly you will have to change the installation pattern this is the first key uh, which uh, usually I use to fill up so uh, there is also a registration file that is called license underscore standalone dot dat this you will be uh, this will be required when you will be finishing up the uh, installation of the software okay once the software is installed over your laptop or over your pc i'm not sure about the macintosh users because there are some certain criteria for the macintosh laptops and the matlab version for macintosh is available but from some uh, but from different sources you will have to choose it wisely that whether you are going to install it for uh, a windows laptop or a macintosh okay once you get it uh, done with the installation of the software it must be there somewhere in the uh, uh, menu in the um, uh, main menu where you, from where you can start it up although there must be a icon over uh, the laptop desktop screen you can get it uh, done while uh, the installation is uh, getting done is getting finished now i do have this matlab icon over here i can all i can do is i can click over here and this is where i get my entire matlab so there are certain windows in this matlab uh, uh, software the first one is called this current folder current folder is something which contains the folder you are working in suppose you are working with uh, some coding so that coding part can be loaded over here so this current folder i'll show you up how how it goes so i'll uh, this current folder contains of that folder where you are working in now this is this uh, this is the path where you are working so for now i'm what i'm going to do i'm going to create a folder okay and this is matlab example with you okay now this folder is empty till now so i'm going to copy this address and i'm going to paste this address over here now see the folder has changed and we are in uh, that particular folder which i have just created matlab example video if you'll put something over here you'll see the changes in the current folder now you can see this hello text is over here it means whatever you do over there would be directly reflecting into this current folder a lot of software when uh, a lot of matlab versions when they get installed this is matlab 2010 and uh, there are other lot of versions available in the market like 2012 2013 but i uh, probably for a beginner this uh, 2010 version is quite good and it has a lot of clear windows which are required for the development now first uh, uh, when you start developing over a matlab project there are some thing there are certain areas where you can develop but for now for this video we're going to start with very beginning now <clears throat> when you install the matlab software over the computer it might 
not show like the same which you are looking at uh, this right now this is current folder this is command window this is workspace this is command this history this is a default layout which has been set by matlab but uh, sometime it happens like uh, by mistake i i close this workspace or by mistake i can close this command history so uh, for uh, to get back these settings we all we can do is desktop and the desktop layout and set it to default you know, you'll get all those things which are which were there uh, previously in the system so it's not a very big deal right so now uh, matlab runs kind of three types of projects one is called the script windowing the script windowing means there would be a single file and and the entire code would, would be written in that uh, particular script file there is another called the guide guide is something that is graphical user interface development environment so that represents a graphical user interface for the users you can put buttons over there and you can put all those other stuffs over there and another is simulink simulink is uh, another type of uh, software which is built in the matlab environment simulink in the simulink uh, you can uh, create circuits and uh, the simulink version is quite helpful for the electrical and electronics engineers so now we are going to start with the script file the first script file how you can create a script file you can just right click in this current folder section you can get a new file and there is option script function class and model now this model is the simulink this class is a uh, class file where you can uh, create objects of those classes this is a function file function means you can call it uh, again and again in the system uh, there are certain ways through which a function can be called now for the beginning we can uh, start with the script file there are other things over there in this right click pop up menu like create a zip file new folder new file so these things would be there in my uh, upcoming video so this is the first script file okay now you can name it uh, anything uh, you want like uh, first class say the the name cannot be written with the spaces so i have written first underscore class now put the enter button and uh, it would take some time for the first time and once it is uh, through it, it won't take this much time now here you can see this is showing up the line number well and put enter it would you know create another number <clears throat> in the programming languages like visual c sharp c c++ or java you need to declare variables before you use it there is nothing like a data type of the variable in matlab you can do anything with matlab like if i say that this is a and uh, I have put a value 10 directly into it. You don't have to uh, declare the variable first before you define it. So I have put a variable a uh, and I have put a value of 10 into the variable a. Now, if I have to see this variable over the working function, I can use the disp function and in disp I can put this variable a and okay. Now this is done. All you have to do is you have to click on this run button. Now here I can see this 10 variable 10 value that has been stored into a variable a and that variable is over here this is in workspace so we come to know that a workspace contains all the variables which are getting used in the program. We can uh, get back to this first class now <clears throat> as I said you that as I told you that there is nothing like a data type in uh, the MATLAB context there are certain data types in the matlab context but they are quite different than the other programming languages like there are cells in the matlab you need to convert those cells to some other format if you going to use them so do, do those things are going to be there in my upcoming video so for the beginning <coughs> if i'll write this up uh, i am going to pass a string in it and a string variable has to be there in a single quote closed by a single quote itself so uh, hello users welcome to my first video now once uh, i i have uh, put a integer variable into a variable uh, integer into a variable a and now i have put the same uh, i have put a string data into the same variable so this shows that 
we don't have data types over the uh, MATLAB software. Look, now see, uh, this 10 value is stored in this A and this A is uh, is acting like an integer right now. And now for the same variable, we have put a string or into that variable and now this variable is acting like a string. So it is quite clear that this MATLAB software can reuse the specification of the variables and uh, can change the specifications of the variable accordingly. Now, I don't want these words to be written over and over again because see this 10 value was from the previous program which uh, which we used to write like it was a equals to 10 and now this is the result of the new. To clear the screen, there is a simple command that is called clc. Now I'll run this program. Now see this we have we do have only this result. This 10 is from the new a variable and this is hello users welcome to my first video. This is from the uh, upcoming uh, variable uh, that is a and we have put the string into it. Now <clears throat> if you have to comment this you can select the lines. If you have to comment one line you can just put a, a percentage sign before the line. If you have to comment certain lines if you have two if you have more than one line you can select the lines and you can press ctrl r these all lines would be commented at once if you have to uncomment then you can select them and ctrl t would be the command to uncomment this was commented twice so we'll have to put again a ctrl t so there is you can write down the commands that uh, ctrl plus r would be for commenting more lines control plus T would be for uncommenting okay so <clears throat> we'll start with uh, a very basic program that is called if else program I, I guess you you guys are familiar with the C C++ environment so there are some difference in the uh, uh, written syntax contrast so first before I start the if else program I'll show you of this workspace folder now this workspace folder acts uh, very uh, simultaneously when you are uh, running the program before a uh, there was a variable a and it has a value of 10 now this variable has the value hello users so this workspace contains the values over the of the variables which are getting used in the program so uh, <clears throat> all i would do that i would take two variables a or say first equals to now if you want to take the input from this is the command window where you can provide input to the program so if you want to provide input to the program you will have to use the input keyword and you can write it down enter the first number then you will close this by a uh, single quote and semicolon would be there if you won't write semicolon it would not, it would not give you an error it would uh, just show you the value of the first variable now the second let it be a second variable as I told you that there is no need to declare the variable before you use it so input enter the second number would we'll run this much program first to check that what this input command does so we'll run this program now see enter the first number and say 25 now see it is asking me for the second number say 35 okay see now this is the first variable which contains a value of 25 the minimum value is 25 and the maximum value is 25 what does this mean if you are using an array in the same program you will get the minimum and minimum and the maximum values of that array you don't need to find out that what would be the maximum number although there are certain commands which can be used to find out the minimum and maximum variables now uh, if it this program would have been written in C++ the syntax must have been like uh, like this if 
a is greater than b and a, a is greater than b then like this c out a is greater something like that but in uh, this matlab section and the else part would be like this in matlab the syntax is a little different it doesn't end with start and end with the curly brackets uh, the curly braces it starts with like if it is your wish you want to put a round bracket over here you can provide the syntax over here also but if you don't provide it won't give you an error if first is greater than second now this if block would end with this end keyword if you won't provide this end keyword it would provide you an error and the else or else if must be there within this if end block so else part would be here only right uh, if you if you have more than two variables so you you would more likely to put the else if condition that else if condition should be also there in this be, uh, between this if and end block so if first is greater than second this okay uh, first number is greater else we don't need to compare this so this uh, second number is greater so we would run this program as we have put the CLC so it would clear the screen first like this only so we have put the first number 25 and is asking for the second number we put no so it is the second number is greater well again this I'll again run this program I would provide the first number has a greater value and the second number is 75 so first number is greater so this is how it goes in now this is this uh, particular language is uh, case sensitive you cannot write CLC in capitals this would provide an error so undefined variable or function in CLC but it would if it would be in the uh, small letters it would clear the screen for you so guys this is for my first video and 